Barry Krause. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa. I hope all is well. Thank you, Ryan. Looking forward to speaking with you. Yeah, I am. I am as well. How, how is the uh, how is life for you right now? Everything's great. I mean, um, you know, when you look at um, you know what I've been doing, I've been working with the Indianapolis Colts, and they had a great year. Brand you know, new coach and Frank Reich, and you know, reached the playoffs. And Andrew Luck has done well, and. You know, in Alabama, being number one in the country throughout, you know, throughout the year, and basically going to the, you know, to the big game, and unfortunately, it didn't work out for them. But um, you know, I love the fact that both of my teams were in the discussion, and uh, you know, I see them coming back and, and uh, you know, being a part of it again. Well, and, and you go back to looking at Alabama and fourteen and one in Tuscaloosa because of all the players like yourself that have made the way to, for this program to be as high. It's like, we don't celebrate second place. There's no, there, I haven't seen a t-shirt in Tuscaloosa. Hey, we finished behind Clemson. Other programs may do that, but in Tuscaloosa, you guys have built this program up where it's almost like national championship or bust. And it's really hard to say, but it's so true here in Tuscaloosa. Well, it's an attitude and it's a tradition. Uh, when I was down there with the university of Alabama, I owned coach Bryant. Um, you know, he talked about excellence, and excellence is uh, uh, it's a habit. Uh, you create this habit in your life about, a, you know, striving and being the best that you can be and being a part of something bigger than yourself. And, uh, and I think that tradition uh, and that focus has really carried on throughout the, the years. And uh, there are a lot of players that I played with and the players before me that, you know, paved the way, gave me the opportunity to be able to play um, at that level. Of, of, of college football. I mean, uh, you know, you got a lot of programs and organizations, but, uh, you know, to be able to excel and, and to be a Division One and to be uh, not only a, a good football team, but a consistent good football team, you know, through the, you know, 70s and, uh, you know, through the years I played, I mean, we were just a good football team all the time. And, you know, I, I think, you know, all of a sudden, you know, that bar is always there. It, it, um, you know walking in uh, that there's a lot to be expected of you and how you fit in and what you bring to the table uh, as far as being a champion. And that's what it's about, it's being a champion and, and uh, creating these incredible habits. You know, football has, you know, gives, gives you so much. And most of the young kids, uh, as they're growing up, about, you know, teaches them teamwork, commitment, desire, uh, being a part of something special and excelling and trying to be the best that you can be. And, and so I just, that's the Alabama tradition, and it's, uh, and it's exciting, and it's uh, been very uh, rewarding over the years to, um, to know that, you know, I was a part of just a little piece of that great tradition. We're talking to Barry Krause right now from the 1978 team, 1979 Sugar Bowl, the guy when we talk about the goal line stand. We're going to work to that conversation. Barry, you played 10 years. No, no, you you played 10 years for the Colts. I believe you even played longer in the the National Football League. Did you learn more about yourself and about your team after a loss than you did a win? Uh, Yeah, you know what? That's a great question. Um, Yes, I, I think you really do. Because, uh, you know, when you win, you kind of feel, hey, you know, I did all this right and everything else. And it's really funny when, when you go into the film room the next day um, throughout the years, you know, whenever you thought you really played a good game, you watched the film and it was like, oh, my gosh, I, I messed up there, there, there. I didn't play as well as I thought. And then there's times when you think uh, that you, you played poorly and you walk in there and you make 18 tackles, you know, or you're part of something you know, big, you know, so uh, you learn a lot. Um, I know that I felt like, I'm going to be candid with you, we got punished if we lost at Alabama. I mean, the the games that we lost, which were very few, uh, were were very, uh, it was like death. It was like someone died in the family, and then we mourned it, and, uh, it was just really difficult. I remember my, my freshman year in 1975, um, I wasn't on the varsity team. I was just a freshman at that time. And uh, we opened up with Missouri on national TV. And Missouri came out with what they called a gap eight defense. And they gapped all their defensive linemen and linebackers in the gaps and really and totally shut down Richard Todd, Ozzie Newsom, and this wishbone offense and, and shut them out 
and shut Alabama, basically beat them up and beat them like, I believe the score was 21 to 7. And I, I just looked around. I was like, oh, no. You know, I, I get to Alabama and all of a sudden we're, we're you know, we're going to flip flop from being champions and winning to <laughs> maybe not having that great of a year. But the next day, which uh, was, uh, I, I guess, Sunday went through. And in fact, Monday when we came out to practice, somebody had taken red spray paint and sprayed the AstroTurf field, uh, the width of it, uh, the score of the game, 21 to 6 or 21 to 7, and underneath it, these big letters, choke. Ooh. And we looked at that all year long and never lost another game after that. Went all the way to the Sugar Bowl and went 11 and 1. So, um, you know, it can be very painful, but there's a lot to learn. And there's a, I think it really brings you back to earth. And I think it really brings you back to those fundamentals and, and you really got to dig deep in your side yourself and you know find out what you could have done better in that game uh, and and that's where you know all of a sudden you don't take for granted anything and uh, so a loss can really go a long way if, if it's uh you know taken the right way and the coaching staff at Alabama and coach Brian never made you, never let you forget that loss all the way through the year never forgot that loss and that loss motivated us to win you know, 10 consecutive games or 11 consecutive games after that. But, but Barry, when, when you look at losing the way – I went through from 75, you guys lost one game. Now, 76, you lost three games, but they were all towards the beginning of the season. You lost to Notre Dame in November, but then you were able to bounce back. You beat Auburn. You beat UCLA, 77. We know the success that you guys were able to do uh, there with SEC Championship. The national title went 78, only losing one game to Southern Cal. But for this Alabama team, I'm sure they wish that they could go go back out three days later, four days later. Uh, but getting it the way that uh, Clemson, and you got to give credit to those guys, but losing 28 points uh, going through the offseason, I'm sure these players are just itching to get back to spring training and going, we just got to find a way to get back on the football field because I'm sure it, uh, after a loss and not getting it to go out and try to make that wrong or right uh, could be even more of a challenge. Yeah, mostly when, um, you know, basically you believe you're you're the best football team. Unfortunately, you didn't play that well on that given day. And you give a lot of credit to Clemson. And uh, I always said off the bat, you know, throughout the years, everybody was, you know, is anybody ever going to beat Alabama? And I said, if they do, they're going to have to have a great quarterback play a great game. And that's exactly what happened, you know. Um, and I just thought Clemson was very well coached and, and, and executed well, and Alabama just missed the, you know, those targets. But um, again, if you would have played, and you want to play that game in a day, next day, or a couple days later, that that result might have been totally different. But again, you know, like I said earlier, I guarantee these coaches are reminding these players, these kids that have been on the team two to three years, about this loss, and don't you ever forget it. Don't forget the the way you felt the way you felt embarrassed, you feel like you let everybody down, and you're right, you did. And we won't ever let that happen again. Don't ever. So that is the motivation that really drives a program. And, and I see Alabama doing that all the way through the offseason and, and all these young kids coming in, you know, the older players are, you know, really in, probably very intense in their workouts. And, and it really, you know, it really parlays into – really helping these young kids as, as they come in realize that uh, they have a lot of work to do and uh, never take anything for granted. But the off-season program, I guarantee, is pretty tough. It's pretty brutal. And, uh, again, uh, it's motivated, motivated by losing a championship game. But the great opportunity, like you said, is to do it again and to, to make it happen. And, and uh, hopefully these players remember that and never, you know, you know, have an opportunity to redeem themselves uh, this year. Barry, can you share a story of conditioning program under Coach Paul Bear Bryant during the offseason? Oh, yeah. Our offseason programs were brutal. We used to go uh, – uh, the Memorial Stadium has two gyms, one upstairs and one downstairs, uh, actually basketball court. And they used to take us down in the lower gym, and it was Jim Goosey, which was our trainer. And uh, Goose would put out these garbage cans uh, so that – when you vomited, you got to throw up over there. You didn't get, you know, he didn't want you to vomit all over the, the mats and everything. And it got so hot down there, hot, humid, and uh, they had mats. And they, they ran us uh, 
uh, back and forth. You know, we did uh, gassers or uh, uh, back and forth, and then uh, jumped on the mat and, and did all kinds of mat uh, uh, agility drills, and um, you know, just really taken after it downstairs. And then we'd run, go outside, and then run a couple miles, do sprint work. But downstairs was just, oh my gosh, we. Anybody, any players that played with me uh, will never forget those off-season workouts. They were more brutal than the regular season. It was like, oh, my gosh. It's just, you know, uh, again, they didn't have water breaks at that time. I'm sure they do a better job of hydrating, but we didn't have the water breaks. There were guys that were vomiting that, you know, just couldn't handle it um, because it was so intense and, you know, the smell of that. So uh, off-season program was tough, but it's what you did during that off-season program, the weightlifting, the workouts that pays dividends. That's what you're doing is you're building equity for the season. And, and the coaches will take that experience and say, remember what you paid the price for? You paid the price. You're paying the price. You did it during the off-season, and this is when it pays off throughout the season. Toward the latter part of the season, your conditioning, your focus, your mental toughness, that's when it all comes together, and that's where you – you know, you define yourself as a champion. We're talking to Barry Krause, legendary player for the Alabama Crimson Tide, was a big part of a national champion season and one of the most famous plays in Alabama Crimson Tide history. Barry, at your age, how often daily do you catch yourself doing things that remind you of Coach Paul Bear Bryant? Every day. Like Every what? Every day. Like and what? No lie. Oh, just. You know, I, I think about uh, committing myself to my workout, committing myself to focus on my business plan. Am I still focused on that and uh, and not allowing any excuses? Um, always believing that uh, every day I've just got to be the best that I can be. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you know, I've not wasted that day. And Coach Bryant always talked about that. He had his little – uh, prayer in his back pocket that he talked about every day was such a gift and and uh, hopefully no one wastes that day you know and so uh, just just in, in places like you wouldn't believe just little thoughts um, you know when it comes down to something to say getting getting tough uh, uh, we've had I've had some tragedies in my family and you know that's what coach Bryant talked about with regards to having adversity and uh, being knocked down. And, you know, the goal line fan is a great, you know, uh, the epitome of what, you know, he talked about with regards to, uh, uh, you know, having your back to the wall and getting knocked down and, and then and, and getting yourself back together and rising to the occasion. And, and being able to overcome or to deal with a lot of the things that are maybe very difficult emotionally, physically, financially. And, and uh, that, that's that been the, 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 the lessons that I learned. And, and, and it's just really, it's incredible. You ask any of the players that I've played with at Alabama, and they'll say the same thing. We think about Coach Bryant all the time. It's just incredible how, how this man um, – who became really basically a father figure in our lives. And, and I see that with Nick Saban and uh, being able to communicate with these young kids. Well, Coach Bryant connected with us. And uh, all those things, a lot of things we, we didn't really hear or understand initially, but 20, 30, 40 years later, all of a sudden it was like, oh, that's what Coach Bryant was meaning. That's where, this is where, this fit into where my, you know, in my life and where I've got to deal with this, uh, you know, head on. And, and uh, you know, a big part of life is awareness and, and being aware of what you're doing. And and, uh, and when you aware it and accept it for what it is, then you can either accept it in your life or discard it because it was used for you at one point. Now you don't maybe need it again. But uh, the list goes on. You know, I can talk about all the different uh, virtues and values that he talked about that we would use in our lives. And, you know, being good family men, doing a man of integrity, uh, being trustworthy. That's what I try to teach my kids. 
Uh, and it's all centers and based around the foundation that Coach Bryant built. Barry, last year after the second 26, 41-yard touchdown reception from Tua to Devontae Smith and big Alex Leather, one on the outside, I mean, I, that, that play just goes through my head over and over and over and over. And I walked into the locker room, and I looked at Devontae Smith, and I talked with him for a couple of minutes, and I interviewed him. And he was still in, like, awe. Like, like it was one of those that he didn't realize – the 41-yard reception. Yeah, he realized that he won a national title, but he was still kind of in a shock mode. Walk us back to the goal line stand. At what point did it hit you? Was it hours? Was it days? Was it weeks? Was it months? The the, the legendary of that play, when did it hit you that that play was such a legendary moment in Alabama football history? Well, I can relate to that young player, man. You're, you're in the moment. I mean, that's what you're conditioned to do. Uh, you dream about that moment, but when you're in the moment, you just seize it or you know take advantage of it. And uh, and uh, I don't know when he'll realize what he did until later in life. I didn't realize it until 10, 15, 20 years later. I'm not kidding you. I didn't think it was that. You know, sure we won an national chip. Yes, you know, and but I had no idea until I went back to Tuscaloosa after my NFL career. Uh, 20, I swear, 15, 20 years later, people are like going, ah, you, you're the, you were part of that goal line stand. You were the goal line stand guy. I'm like, yeah. And they go, oh, my gosh, you know, this is it's awesome. It's just great to meet you. I'm like, wow, that's nice. I never realized the impact uh, of that one play in my life, that that – resonates in my life over and over and over and there, there almost seems to be you know i don't know a couple of days three days or whatever but uh you know i've been working out and, and this, a friend of mine is a fox johnson in Ch chattanooga tennessee and he goes barry do you realize do you realize that i used to i, I had your picture up and, and to be able to meet you and i'm kind of like you know kind of awkward a little bit with that but i didn't realize it was that big of a deal I really didn't. I didn't realize that it would be remembered as one of the greatest plays, if not the greatest play in Alabama's football history. What a thrill. What an honor. Um, so the answer to the question is you don't know the impact of it until you almost look in the mirror and go, oh my gosh, you know, because of that play, we won, not only won a national championship, uh, but, we, but it also propelled me into the NFL as the number one draft pick. I mean, Wow. And all of a sudden, 13 years later, it's like, wow, a number one pick. And it was because of a play I, you know, um, you know, that, that I just made a tackle on the goal line, which, you know, you know, that's what we were always trained and coached to do. But I had no idea the magnitude of it and how people still revere it and remember it and identify with it. And that is what's really cool is how they can tell me almost like, I think this is before you were born is when Robert Kennedy was murdered or uh, the Challenger blew up or people can remember or 9-11 where people can remember exactly where they were, what they were doing at that time. People come up to me and they share that with me, which is an incredible experience. They tell me where they were, either in their house or their mother was given birth or you know, they were in the stadium or and it's just remarkable. And, and I just really am honored and humbled uh, to have been able to be a part of Alabama football, but to, you know, to make a play like that is just awesome. 1979 MVP. And, and I do want to make note uh, that was the first only defensive player to win MVP in the first 75 years of the Sugar Bowl history. That was Barry Krause. And we're talking with him now. Barry, let me ask you about this NFL draft process because we love the goal line stand and we're going to salute that as we travel throughout the offseason. We'll see if we can get you back on and maybe talk about if we may ever, ever get you to back down to Tuscaloosa. Maybe we can go out to eat and then come back and just continue talking about it because as we celebrate those great moments, uh, it's fun to relive those. Uh, what's these players about to go through? Because you were, a, as you said, a first-round pick. Uh, the scrutiny, the, 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 you know, these guys are having to kind of dodge that. And, you know, this agent's telling them this, somebody's telling them this, they open up ESPN, they look at these mock drafts. How difficult is that of a process when everybody scrutinizes every part of your game and you're kind of having to hear that and you're also trying to block it out as well? 
Wow, yeah, uh, it's it's uh, night and day between when I was uh, when I when I came out because uh, we didn't have all this ESPN stuff. They were flying to New York. We didn't have the combine. Uh, anybody and his brother could be an agent. You know, there was no direction. Um, and, and instead of having a combine, I flew all over the country. So the New York Jets wanted to interview me and work me out. So I fly to New York, and then I flew to. Tampa Bay, and then I flew to Philadelphia. So I was flying all the time, which uh, I, you know really kind of ruined the latter part of my uh, college. Uh, so uh, I didn't finish college, and Coach Bryant was upset about that. But uh, you know, with them flying us all, up, flying me over all over the place, I didn't have a choice. But knowing that, I want to tell you, Ryan, that I'm graduating University of Alabama in August of this year. I just needed like less than uh, 18 hours to finish my degree. So I'm getting my degree. Awesome. Awesome. But, that is yeah. great news. Great news. Yeah. So, but I just like to, you know, Paul Bear Bryant, Paul, Paul Jr. has made it happen for me with the scholarship and he's really helped me. And I, I appreciate him, uh, Coach Bryant's son, uh, Jr. But, you know, uh, these kids are going through a lot more than, than I've ever ever seen before because they are they're getting criticized they're getting scrutinized they're they're under a microscope uh the social media is watching them uh you know some kids go off and do some things in this period of time that uh you know you, uh, from a business standpoint you don't want to compromise yourself um uh, you want to be in the best shape give yourself the best opportunity uh, so when you go to Indianapolis for that combine, that you're the best that you're best that you could be, um, you know, and uh, it's an exciting time. Uh, and but you see a lot of uh, you know players that think they're they're better than what they are, and they don't go high in the draft, or they might not get drafted. So there's disappointment. But uh, these young kids, uh, it's an you know, uh, you know. They didn't have the money in the NFL. They didn't have free agents in the NFL when I was playing. Uh, and these kids have big money uh, coming up as far as the NFL is concerned. So uh, these guys going into the combine and being scrutinized it, every which way, um, tested. It's an exciting time, but it's also can be somewhat nerve-wracking. Uh, I think it's uh, I'm sure that all of them are just going to be pleased when it's, it's as they move forward and. And hopefully they do have that opportunity. But again, you know, you're you're only talking about one half of one percent of the kids in college, you know, make it to the pros, and and it is a thrill and it's an honor, but it's difficult to get there. Barry, thank you so much for helping us out, and uh, certainly, man, we we always enjoy the conversations, the the chats that we're able to relive those moments of Alabama football history. We have a very uh, wonderful tradition, and I appreciate you helping us preserve the history of the Crimson Tide. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. Well, thank you too, Ryan. You keep it alive, and I appreciate being part of the conversation, and I look forward to getting back to T-Town and having maybe some ribs with you again. So uh, I appreciate being on your show. You do a great job, and thanks for the honor of being on. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, sir. Have a great day, man. Okay, bye.